you hopefully it goes live this time. It shows it's starting. We'll see. Wait for it to say live. There we are. Okay, we're live. Okay, so this is going to be the Daily Bread is reading for December 31st. Our Insight Scripture is going to be Hebrews 13, 14 through 21. And our reading is going to be Malachi 1 through 4 and Revelation 22. Father God, I just give you praise and, and honor. Father, I thank you that you woke us up today. I thank you for blessing us to see a new year. And Lord, I pray that this year is the year that gives you the praise and gives you the honor that that helps to bring your kingdom with lots of more lots of people to come to the knowledge and saving grace of Jesus Christ Father as we read your word I ask that you help us to grow in our wisdom and knowledge discernment and understanding help us to know what it is that you're saying through your word so that we will have the tools we need father so that we can share it with others while there's still time let us be the salt and the light of the earth the light on the hill father as we are called to be through your son jesus and we pray all these things in the name of jesus amen the anonymous oh hebrews 13 14 through 21 the anonymous author of the book of Hebrews wrote to Jewish believers in Jesus who were suffering because of persecution, encouraging them to preserve, persevere in their faith, and to endure suffering for the sake of Christ, to bear the disgrace he bore. Hebrews 13.13 13. Believers in Jesus can persevere because, as the author reminds us, this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. The author cites examples of believers who, in faith, chapter 11, chose to suffer for Christ because they were looking for an eternal home in heaven. Abraham looked forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God, verse 10. Moses regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value and the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Uh, verse 26 and 27. And this is written by K.T. Sim. Fourteen. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Prayer request. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things deserving to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Benediction for my lips. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Pray for us that we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. Amen. That should be like the prayer of every day, that everything we do, we should do unto the Lord, and it should be for His glory and His honor. Amen. 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 This, the insight story for today is called The Righteous City. On New Year's Eve 2000, Officials in Detroit carefully opened a hundred-year-old time capsule. Nestled inside the copper box were hopeful predictions 
for some city leaders who express visions of prosperity. The mayor's message, however, offered a different approach. He wrote, may we be permitted to express one hope superior to all others that you may realize as a nation, people, and city you have grown in righteousness, for it is this that exalts a nation. More than success, happiness, or peace, the mayor wished that future citizens would grow in what it means to be truly just and upright. Perhaps he took his cue from Jesus, who blessed those who long for his righteousness. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. But it's easy to get discouraged when we consider God's perfect standard. Praise God, we don't have to rely on our own effort to grow. The author of Hebrews said it this way, May the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing His will, and may He work in us what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 13, 20-21 Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing His will, and may He work in us what is good and acceptable. I'm pretty sure that's how that ends. It cut off part of my scripture. Go ahead, James. We who are in Christ are made holy by His blood the moment we believe in Him. Verse 12. But He actively grows the fruit of righteousness in our hearts throughout a lifetime. We'll often stumble on the journey, yet still we look forward to the city that is to come, where God's righteousness will reign. Verse 14, by Karen Pope. Just one second, I'm actually looking that up really super quick. 13, was it? Yeah, 20 and 21. 13, 20, 21, just to make sure that I finish that right. 21. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, whom he threw be glory forever and ever. What was there any? Yeah. And it said, it said, okay, so I have a different version. Equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is. working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. And let me read the New King James Version because it's kind of contradicting against the NIV that this brought up. Verses 21 and 22 in the New King James Version read, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And amen. Yeah, I don't even know what that was reading. I'm reading the wrong one. Was it 20 and 21? Yeah. Jeez. Okay, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus. That, okay, so that great shepherd of, this, of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyway, that's cool. Alright, so that was written by Karen Kimball. Okay. Alright, so for what for what Christ like attributes would you like to be known? How can you encourage others to seek God's righteousness? Father God, please work in us what's pleasing to you. And then it reiterates Hebrews thirteen twenty one, may he produce in you every good thing that is pleasing to him. Amen? Amen. Be Christ minded. Okay, so our reading is going to be Malachi 1 through 4. Polluted offerings to God. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Israel, beloved of God, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord? Yet Jacob I have loved, but Esau I have hated, and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness. Even though Edom has said, We have been impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, They may build, but I will throw down. They shall be called the territory of wickedness. 
In the people against whom the Lord will have indignation forever, your eyes shall see and you shall say, The Lord is magnified beyond the border of Israel. Polluted offerings. A son offers his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am the master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, In what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, In what way have we defiled you? By saying, The table of the Lord is contemptible, and when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. But now entreat God's favor, that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he accept you favorably? Says the Lord of hosts. Who is there, even among you, who would shut the doors, so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from your hands. Far from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. In every place incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it, and that you say the table of the Lord is defiled, and its fruit, its food is contemptible. You also say, Oh, what a weariness, and you sneer at it, says the Lord of hosts. And you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick. Thus you bring an offering. Should I accept this from your hand, says the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver who has in his flock a male and takes a vow, but sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is to be feared among the nations. Malachi 2, Corrupt Priest And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already, because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will, re will rebuke your descendants and spread refuse on your faces, the refuse of your solemn feast, and one will take you away with it. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me, and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and turned many... From the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek the law from his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts but you have departed from the way you have caused many to stumble at the law you have corrupted the covenant of Levi says the Lord of hosts therefore I also have made you contemptible and base before all the people because you have not kept my ways you have not or, but have shown partiality in the law Treachery of infidelity. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the Lord's holy institution, which he loves. He has married the daughter of a foreign god, May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob the man who does this, being awake and aware, yet who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying, so he does not regard the offering anymore, nor receive it with good will from your hands. Yet you say, For what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? 
He seeks godly offspring. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit, that you do not deal treacherously. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, In what way have we wearied him? And that you say, Everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or, Where is the God of justice? Malachi 3, The Coming Messenger. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that he may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Ah. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, and as in the days of old, as in former years. For I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, In what way shall we return? Do not rob God. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will be, that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. The people complain harshly. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed, for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. A book of remembrance. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spares his own son who serves them. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Malachi 4, the great day of God. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. That will leave them neither root nor branch, but to you who fear my name. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse.
Revelation 22, the river of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They, he, they need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The time is near. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down with worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the times at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Jesus testifies to the church. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the holy city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers, and sexually immoral and murderers and idolatry and whoever loves and practices a lot. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. A warning. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. I am coming quickly. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. And that concludes the reading for December 31st. If y'all want to hear more of these readings with James reading with me, be sure to comment in the comment section or, or, or like this video and let, let him know that you enjoyed him reading with me. I hope y'all have a blessed the rest of your night. Know that Jesus loves you. We love you. And know that there's never a pit too deep that Jesus isn't willing to pull you out. In Revelation 3.10, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man hears my voice, I will enter in and sup with him and he with me. Just know that he is a gentleman, but know that time is short. Don't let the devil lie to you until you have time, because time is running out fast. If you just watch the news of what's going on in the Middle East and everything, that Israel is surrounded. There's wars and rumors of war, everything that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, and so forth, is happening right now. There are many prophecies that are being fulfilled before our very eyes. So it's time to, to get right or to get left. Amen. Shalom for now.